If I close my eyes and sit here, somebody walks into this hall, I will tell you what kind of person has walked in. You will see once you sit like this, your brains will work better, believe me. If you know human body from within, you yourself look at this. Just see how your body feels when there's food in the stomach and how your body feels when the stomach is empty. You will see your body and your brain will work at its best when your stomach is empty. If food is constantly being processed in your digestive system, a certain amount of energy naturally is gone there so, your… both your brain and body will not function at their best. If you want to be at your full potential, you must keep your body and your metabolism of the body in such a way, whatever… whatever you eat, whatever you eat, within one and a half to two and a half hours, your stomach must be empty. This is what yoga always insists. Within an hour and a half to two, your stomach should be empty. Stomach being empty, does not mean hunger. Only when the energy levels run down, you feel hunger. Otherwise, stomach must be empty. In this corner, there is a stone mantapam or a pavilion where we have set up an ideal office setup for you. Low level chairs, low level tables, you will see once you sit like this, your brains will work better, believe me. I cannot speak or explore something without folding my legs. At least one leg must be folded, otherwise I know the difference how my brain will work. If you don't know the difference when it's working and when it's not working, you're a serious problem. Just legs folded and sit down for some time, keep your spine erect, suddenly your ability to perceive, I'm telling you, if I close my eyes and sit here, somebody walks into this hall, I will tell you what kind of person has walked in. Oh, Sadhguru, you are a great yogi, that's not the point. Even the dog in your house knows this, isn't it? Yes or no? Your dog is sitting under the sofa, someone comes at the main door, he knows who has come. Yes or no? What a dog can know, you cannot know? <laughs> no, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is, essentially the whole evolutionary process from an amoeba to being a human being is more complex and sophisticated neurological system, isn't it? Yes or no? You have, as a human being, the most sophisticated neurological system. If a dog can sense it, you can also sense it. It is just that you are in a muddle of thought all the time. Because the necessary attention is gone in most people. Because they are seeing a kaleidoscope of colors on their screens and stuff, they've lost that ability. One thing is to bring this attention back. Every dimension of yoga is made to heighten your attention to a level that whatever is here, you should not miss it. Everything must be in your experience. That is when you can call yourself a full-fledged full human being. Do not carry your attention deficiency as some kind of a qualification. Anything yields to you only to the extent you pay attention to it. In this aspect, breath is a beautiful device to practice attention. Attention not for a specific purpose, simply to be attentive. Whether you're an artist, you're a scientist, you're a spiritually oriented person, you're a business person, or you're just living your life in terms of your family, your love, your joy, 
all these things will yield to you only because you have paid sufficient attention to it. Human attention can open just about any door in the universe. But to be able to be attentive without purpose, without calculating the results, just to be attentive, to make life force into an attentive process, your attention can be just of the mind or you can engage your whole body in your attention. If you need to understand this, if you watch a, a tiger or a leopard or a cheetah crouching for its hunt, you will see he is not only paying mental attention, his entire body is attentive, is focused, the energies are focused. So if you engage your body, your energies into the mental attention, suddenly this attention becomes a tremendous force which makes variety of aspects of life to yield to you. Life yields to you only to the extent that you are able to create the power of attention. The power of human attention is an incredible force. You have to learn with necessary practice to unleash this force to your benefit and to everybody's benefit. All of you should pay attention to, you know, my wonderful vessel. Please, pay attention. Please, just do this right now. You shouldn't take your attention off this vessel. Just, just pay attention. It's such a beautiful vessel. Please. So, now uh, as I speak, see, you can't stay with that vessel. One moment and okay. Now, suppose you fell in love with this vessel. Now if I hide this vessel, you want to see it. It doesn't matter where the vessel goes in your mind, the vessel plays. Now your mind is like this because you're emotionally involved with it. You fell in love with the vessel and now your mind is constantly on it. So this is what devotion is. It's a powerful way of paying attention, an effortless and joyful way of paying attention. If you try to concentrate on something, you'll get a headache. But if you fall in love with something, anyway your focus is 100% there and you won't get a headache, you will be ecstatic. This is a more intelligent way of using your mind than anything that people have known as intellect. A devotee has a completely different perspective of life. It is a different dimension of intelligence where he is able to access things that others cannot even dream of effortlessly, joyfully. Because emotionally he is involved, his, at his attention is absolute. And whatever you pay attention to, if your attention is absolute, that dimension of life has to open, it has to yield, there is no choice.